Did you know that skipping meals can actually increase your risk of diabetes? In this episode, we will be talking about when exactly you should eat to help prevent diabetes. Hi, so my name is Shaista Zahiruddin. I am here to teach you how and today when to eat to help prevent diabetes. Now, a lot of people eat one big meal a day. And that's not really the best thing to do for your body, especially if you're at a risk of diabetes. And that's because when we don't eat for a long period of time, our blood sugars start going down. Imagine that you woke up and you decided you did not wanna eat anything today. Your blood sugar starts going down and down and down. By the time you eat your big main meal, for some people, this could be your actual dinner. This is when your blood sugar is really low. And at this time, your body thinks that you are in starvation mode. So our body might assume that there's a famine going on and we don't have enough food. So your body tries to look for fat. At this point, no matter what you eat, even if it's a salad that you're eating, If there is even a drop of oil or fat in that salad, your body is going to go and absorb that first because your body's priority at this time is store fat, store fat because your body thinks there's a famine going around. So first of all, your body is at alert. It is at a very high stress level. That's where a lot of stress hormones are also released. But then you are absorbing a lot of fat. Like I said, you know, even if there's a drop of fat in the salad, it's going to absorb that first. And then whatever you eat, whether it's carbs or protein, everything is going to get broken down and converted to fat and then stored as fat. Where is that fat going to be stored? In your muscles, in your tissues, in your abdomen, in your liver, all these places where fat shouldn't be. But that's important for the body because it's thinking that it's helping you survive. But that's not a good thing because like I said in the previous video, the more fat you have, especially the fat that's in the wrong places, can worsen insulin resistance. And if you keep doing this over and over and if you keep skipping meals, there's more fat absorbed, more fat stored and then this causes insulin resistance and again the whole cycle starts so one of the best things you can do for your body is try to break the cycle that means that you want to start eating meals more often now when it comes to fasting it's a different story and we'll talk about that in some other video and if you want me to talk about fasting i will make a video for that put it in the comments below and i'll be sure to do that but in general when you fast it is a controlled environment you know you're doing it for a couple days or a couple weeks and then you don't do it for the rest of the year and that there is wisdom behind that that period is to cleanse your body you don't need cleansing every single day that's why you're not supposed to fast every single day and the starvation mode results in a lot of health problems so one of the best things you can do is try to eat a meal soon after you wake up so whether you want to call it breakfast or whatever you want to call it it's always good to have a good balanced meal now let me show you what happens in the body when there is a balanced meal so your blood sugars they are stably increasing and you see that it's there's no big spike because you're eating smaller or a more balanced meal when your blood sugars after your meal comes to a point where it reaches the baseline or where you, your blood sugars are normal, this is usually a point when you start craving for foods. You start craving sugary foods, especially around this point, because this is a sign for your body that, okay, your blood sugar is going low, so now you need sugar, right? And then if you don't eat anything and you go beyond that point, anything after your normal blood sugar level any point below that your body is going to start craving for fats and looking for fats and this is at this point where your body is starting to think that you're starving so it's always a good idea to eat a little before your blood sugars go to normal so this would mean that a few minutes or half an hour before your body starts craving sugars 
everybody's body is a little different and of course the type of food you eat will affect this but on average it takes about three to four hours after your meal when it is a good point to eat a next meal that means that you should try to eat every three to four hours now i know you must be thinking wow that's a lot but the point is that you eat small meals not big meals like you're used to so at least three meals is the minimum and uh, for most people between five to six small meals it's a is a pretty good balance it helps give you energy it keeps your metabolism active i talked about how a lot of people who have diabetes or pre-diabetes have low energy and get tired a lot this will help in that this can help boost energy so eating more frequently really helps with that and this also helps regulate blood sugar levels so let me show you so if you decide to eat a small balanced snack at this point right before your blood sugar goes low then there's a rise in blood sugar levels which is good and then again you try to eat within the three to four hours and then continue the cycle this is how your blood sugars remain constant so there's no highs and lows which is very important for people who are trying to prevent and even manage diabetes so having a good flow of sugar not too high and not too low is a good place because when you're going to sleep there will be blood sugars that are going to go a bit lower but that's okay as long as you can eat your first meal within the hour of waking up you should be able to keep your blood sugars consistent while you're awake and doing that also helps keep your insulin spikes controlled because if there's less sugar that your body has to put inside the cells there will be less insulin that your body will release which is very important if you go back to the first video and i'm going to link that in the cards the amount of insulin that's released really really affects your body because the more insulin there is over time this can become resistant because your body your cells will think that um, there's something wrong insulin shouldn't always be present and your cells start resisting insulin and over time this production of insulin starts making uh, the pancreas tired and they start producing insulin and that's where diabetes type 2 is uh, found so trying to prevent that as early as possible is important any diet that is helpful in managing diabetes is very important in controlling or preventing diabetes as well so if you're someone who doesn't have diabetes and are worried about it this is very helpful following this pattern but even if you do have diabetes this pattern is also usually very helpful so i've talked about when you can eat but what should you eat in these meals? Uh, I will be discussing a lot of that in the next few videos. But I do have an e-course where I show you how you can create your own meal plan. So I give you more ideas about foods and the types and the amounts and the portions of foods in the course. And we also discuss how to create meal plans for your body and I help you do the calculations and whatever is necessary. So it's there if you could just go on the site and I'll also link uh, the site on the description box below so to conclude today's session it's very important to eat every three to four hours and you want to make sure that you break the cycle of the starvation mode because you don't want to absorb more fat than you need to right so make sure you eat every three to four hours so there are three ways you can do this you can either divide your main meals into smaller six meals instead of three meals you can actually do three meals as long as they are more balanced that's fine or you could do your breakfast and then a little bit of a snack and then a lunch and then a small snack and then dinner and if you're going to be awake late at night then you can also have a third snack late in the evening especially if you have diabetes or your blood sugars aren't well controlled in the morning it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a healthy snack late in the evening and that could be something like a cereal which is again high fiber cereal because then that will keep your blood sugars more stable overnight so that is it for today good luck and i'll see you next week goodbye